Hi, you guys, it's Yaz. And today I want to talk about the best way to do no contact. Everybody knows that when you deal with a narcissistic person that's toxic, you're going to have to go no contact in order to get your peace. Now, no contact, understand this, the reason that we go no contact is for our own peace and to heal. It's not to punish the narcissist, okay? So when you're dealing with a a narcissist and you finally come to the realization that you just can't resolve conflict with this person and you'll never be able to resolve conflict with a narcissist because they can't take accountability, they can't own when they're wrong, they won't acknowledge the truth, they will deny, deny, they will lie. And a lot of times, narcissists just want to sweep things under the rug, okay? And the problem with that is... You know, if you can't acknowledge the problem, you can't fix the problem. Or if they do acknowledge the problem, they will blame shift and say you're the problem. So the bottom line with that is you'll never be able to resolve conflict with the narcissist. So now you've exalted every single try you could to try to work it out with this person. Maybe you've tried to talk to them and they gaslight you and tell you they don't know what you're talking about. Maybe they're cold and indifferent. Maybe they isolate you. Maybe they, you know, could care, they couldn't care less whether they had you in their life or not. And it's really causing you a lot of pain. So now you've come to a point where you have to go no contact. Or it could be the fact that you do a reverse discard because the narcissist is not being upfront and transparent with you. And you've just got to let them go because you can't take it anymore. You have somebody who's not making an effort in the relationship, somebody who's telling you one thing that they care or they love you, but they're showing you something else because they don't care if they see you. They don't care if they call you. They don't care. They're not all into the relationship and you feel it. And you have to always trust your gut because the gut never lies. It's not what comes out of somebody's mouth. It's how you feel, how a person makes you feel will tell you whether this person is a positive in your life or a negative. Just don't be fooled by the beginning of a relationship with a narcissist because in the beginning, during the love bombing stage, they're going to make you feel terrific. But always remember the timing of things. That is the beginning of the relationship and everybody's nice in the beginning. You'll see the true person towards the end of the relationship when the mask comes off and you really see their true core character. So now you're at a point where you're like, you know what? I've got to go no contact. This is so hard, but I have to go no contact. A couple things about no contact, you guys. When you first go no contact, it is going to be extremely, extremely hard because in some cases it's like a death. You, this person was built up in your mind. You thought you were going to have a life with this person, or you thought you were going to have a relationship with this person, or maybe this person was a family member. And now you're at the realization, like, you know what? This person is not there for me. The, you know, the realization is, you know, who you thought was going to have your back and who you thought was going to be there for you ended up disappointing you. And so now you're really hurt. So you go through that no contact, but you have to understand something. You have to ride the wave. You've got to accept the fact that you're going to be down. You're going to be depressed. You may be anxious in the beginning. It's all part of the healing process. You may grieve. You may cry. It's all part of the, you know, the healing process. You've got to get through that. You lost somebody that you cared about in your life and you realize that this person is not going to change. And in order for you to have your peace, you've got to go no contact. Now, how do you go no contact? When you go no contact with the narcissist, okay, when you can go no contact, in cases where you have children or maybe there's family involved and you can't go completely no contact, you have to gray rock those people. We know that. Not everybody can go no contact because of certain circumstances. For instance, if you're co-parenting with a narcissist and you've got to discuss issues for the children about visitation and all of that, 
you gray rock, okay? Go listen to my podcast where I talk about divorcing the narcissist, all right? So you guys, you have to go complete. When you can go no contact, you go completely no contact. And what does that mean exactly? Because a lot of people, they say they're no contact, but they're really not no contact. When you go no contact with a narcissist, that means that you don't talk to them at all. You block them on all social media. You block them completely. You're not looking at their social media and you keep your social media to private so that they can't view what you're doing or anything like that. All right. And the reason that you do that is because you're going to see posts that they put up that are going to upset you. Or they may see posts that you put up and they may start trouble through other people. See, when a narcissist can't get through to you, they're going to get other people involved. That could be your friends, your family, mutual people that you both know that will, you know, things will get back to you. And it's, what is it going to do? It's going to upset you or it's going to trigger you. See, when you still have contact with a narcissist, the two problems that you have if you don't go completely no contact is that it's either going to make you really sad and upset if you see things you don't like. For instance, the narcissist is with a new supply and they're posting pictures and they're all in love or it's going to anger you. It's going to anger you because you're going to feel like this person doesn't care. And understand this, when you don't go completely no contact with the narcissist, they know it and they know that you're watching, okay? Narcissists know that you're watching. And that's one of the reasons why they always post the new supply right away in the beginning about how in love they are and everything like that because they wanna rub it in your face. And people say, well, why do they do that? Because they're angry about the breakup and they're blaming you for that breakup, okay? They don't take any accountability or acknowledge that, you know, they're at fault for part of the breakup even. No, it's always all your fault, all right? So they know they're watching, and a lot of them are sadistic, and they, you know, post things that are going to annoy you. The other thing, too, you guys, is if you don't block them from your social media, or your social media is, you don't block them, and they could view your social media, let's say if it's public and they're not blocked or whatever, they may try to trigger you. And how do they do that? They'll start liking pictures of maybe you with a a new person in your life. And I had somebody ask me, well, why did they, why did he do that? He saw him with a new guy and he was liking the picture. I said, because basically he's trying to mind fuck you. That's what he's trying to do. He's trying to put him himself in your mind so that you think about him. And what's that going to do? That's going to mess you up. Because you're going to start to reminisce and think, well, maybe he cares. Maybe he cares, all right? Or another way to look at it is he's kind of showing you like, oh, you know, you moved on. Yeah, great, or something like that. It's a dig. That's what it is. It's a dig, and it's also to, you know, put the narcissist back into your mind, which is going to fuck up your mind and you moving forward. And this is a, a huge reason why you don't want these people to see your social media or know what's going on in your life and you don't want to view their social media. And I know it's hard because you're hurt and you want to see what's going on in this person's life, but you've got to stay focused. You've got to say to yourself, your ex is your ex for a reason. There's a reason why you're not with that person. Never forget that. Never forget what the narcissist did to you how they treated you poorly, how they disrespected you, how they lied to you, how they treated you like a fool. Even write it down on a piece of paper so that you don't forget, okay? Because if you keep in contact with the narcissist, you're never going to be able to completely heal, all right? You're always gonna fall back. And then if you're in a new relationship, you may not give it a try or you might start seeing things you don't like in the new partner because you're still, your mind is still falling back on the narcissist. You've got to erase the narcissist from your mind. The only way to do that is to not look at their social media and block them completely across the board, okay? And, you know, 
You're going to have to deal with loneliness in the beginning. You're going to have to deal with being bored, okay? Because when you leave a narcissistic relationship, there's so much drama with the narcissist. Even if it's toxic, a lot of people miss the drama because it's excitement. It's keeping you going. And now all of a sudden you go no contact and it's like crickets, right? You know the phone's not going to ring. You know there's no text messages coming in and you're you're lonely and you're sad and you're reminiscing and what are you going to do you're going to start to think that you were the problem okay and especially if that narcissist devalued you right before the breakup and and flipped the blame on you to make you think you're the problem so now all of these feelings and emotions are going to eat away at you this is why you've got to stay focused focused and remember all the nasty things that that narcissist did. If they were so great, you would still be with them today. Remember that. If they were so willing to work it out with you, you would be with that person today, but they weren't, all right? They weren't because they value themselves first. They didn't put the effort into the relationship. They would rat their pride, you guys, their pride is more important than humbling themselves and working it out with you. So remember that when you're trying to stay strong during the no contact. Remember the fact that they put their pride ahead of their love for you. And that's not a person who loves you, okay? A person who loves you can humble themselves, all right? That's why a narcissist can never love you because they can't humble themselves. They can't sacrifice themselves and not benefit from it. So they are all self-absorbed. It's all about them. And unless you want to be in a one-sided relationship that you're going to be miserable, this is why we do the no contact. Now, keep in mind, you've got to also go no contact with any strings of the narcissist. Now, what does that mean? That means, let's say you had a relationship with their family or their friends, or you have mutual friends. You've got to distance yourself from these people because they talk. And whatever you say to these people, they're gonna go back and tell the narcissist, all right? whether it's good or bad, they're going to tell the narcissist. So there's still that line of communication, which is not good. And why is that? Because that will feed the narcissist and the narcissist may come back and hoover you, love bomb you and play upon your emotions. That's why narcissists are always, you know, trolling your social media. They have multiple you know, profiles, social me media profiles. They have profiles that they either creep on and they're trying to get other supply or they have profiles where they're watching you. And people say, well, why do they care? Why are they watching me? Because they want to see that they didn't lose anything. They want to know that you're doing bad because it makes them feel better that they didn't lose anything, all right? See, if you move on and you're doing great, that's going to make the narcissist feel bad that they lost something good or that you're a valuable person and you're with somebody good. That's going to kill the narcissist, all right? But the bottom line is you don't want to feed the narcissist because you want them out of your life, all right? You don't even want to make them jealous because it'll feed the narcissist and they'll come back and they will try to manipulate you again. And they're very good at manipulating. They'll come back. They'll tell you how much they love you. Some of them will even say, you know, oh, I'm sorry. Some of them will. Most won't. But they'll say, you know, Let's, uh, I'm changing. I'm going to go to therapy. I'm going to do this. It's, it's not genuine. It's not genuine. Okay? If they have to go to therapy because they feel they're losing you, they're not doing it because for the right reasons that they want to change. They're doing it because they feel they have to in order to keep you. So what does that mean? That means that they're not really, you know, wanting to acknowledge that there's anything wrong with them themselves, but they're trying to appease you. 
They're trying to appease you temporarily, and then they're going to go back to their old ways. And why do they go back to their old ways? Because that's their basic character and their basic pattern of behavior, okay? So bottom line is you cannot keep in contact with anybody that is friendly with the narcissist, all right? And if you have to, let's say it's a family member or you you have to, for whatever reason, you don't tell them jack shit about anything that's going on in your life. You keep your life private. The, the people that are friendly with the narcissist, the flying monkeys, they don't necessarily have to be flying monkeys. They could just be people that they're friends with and not necessarily flying monkeys, but in any event, these are not your people, okay? Because they still have a relationship with the narcissist and you don't. So in order to have your peace, you have to distance yourself. Because again, it's still a line of communication and it will still feed the narcissist and they could cause problems for you down the road. You know, because it's a reminder about you. You want to also erase yourself from the narcissist's mind as well. And why is that? So that these people get the fuck out of your life, all right? You don't want to feed the narcissist at all. You want toxic out of your life. That's why you want to fall off the face of the earth like a speck so that they never see you, they never hear about you, nothing. And what's that going to do? That's going to give you your peace and that's going to get you to heal, okay? So, you don't want any kind of emotions being stirred. So it'll be radio silent, radio silent. And you've got to accept that. But the point is, what are we doing? We're staying focused and we're saying, okay, the narcissist was my past. That's a piece of journey of my life that I went through. I can't change the past, but I have to leave the past in the past. Now I'm moving on to another journey in my life which is my future. Now I have to focus on the people that will be in my life, the people that are there for me and my friends, the family that are there for me, or I will make new relationships and keep people in my life that lift me up and don't tear me down. My focus is on the present and on the future. And it's going to take time to get your life going. You got to accept that. You've got to give yourself time. All right. And a lot of people come back to me and they'll say, you know, it's been a year. It's been two years. I just can't get that narcissist off my mind. And I tell them there's two reasons for that. All right. Number one, you're not seeing the narcissist for how toxic they were. You need to go back, do your due diligence, start writing it down on a piece of paper. All the things that that narcissist did, understand narcissism, you know, to see it clearly, how they gaslit you, how they were toxic, how they manipulated you. The only way you're going to see that is to write it down in black and white and remember and, and, and to dissect it and study it so that you can see the toxicity in it and realize that it was no good. Okay. And the other reason that you reminisce about the narcissist is because you don't have anything going on in your life, all right? I tell people that all the time. You know, when they tell me they're missing the narcissist, they're reminiscing. I say to them, what do you got going on? And they're like, oh, you know, I date and everything, but nobody. Yeah, that's right. Nobody that has done it for you. But understand that when you met the narcissist, you know, all that glitters is not gold. So when a narcissist comes into your life, it's like a whirlwind, okay? In other words, it's like you're going to get that rush of adrenaline because you feel that chemistry. Maybe it's a lust thing. You were lusting the narcissist. It wasn't a love thing because a love thing is a mutual thing where two people, you know, sacrifice for each other. Did the narcissist sacrifice for you without getting any kind of benefit out of it? I doubt it, okay? Okay. So it was more a chemistry and a lust thing. And you're missing that because you're out there and you're not feeling that with other people because you're not giving these other people a chance, all right? Because, you know, 
You have to start at the bottom and gradually go up with somebody and you build together that connection. Whereas when you had the narcissist, you started at the top. You thought it was great. Oh my God, we're in a relationship in one week. All right, because the narcissist built up that fantasy and future faked you and told you you were going to have this wonderful life together and you were going to be married and you were going to live in a big house and you were going to have the kids were going to look like you. And they told you everything that you fantasize about, but it was all BS lies because they wanted something out of you. It wasn't real. You dealt with a con artist, a con artist that played upon your emotions and that's what you got to write down on a piece of paper every time you feel like going back to that narcissist, all right? You got to think about how this person wasted your time. You got to think about how this person treated you and, and looked at you like a fool, a fool because you were authentic and they played game on you. So they viewed you as stupid and like a fool. So next time you feel like you're going to contact that narcissist, you better step back and think about these things and say, you know what? No way. I'm not calling. The, I'm not contacting this narcissist. They th they tried to play me for a fool. No way. I'm not contacting this narcissist because they really didn't care. If they really cared, they would have made the effort. If they really cared, they would have tried to resolve conflict. If they really cared, they would have been there for me when I was down. All right. These are all things that a narcissist will never be there for you. And, and when you go through life, you guys, you know, you're going to, you may not feel it when you're younger, but as you get older, there's going to be certain obstacles in your life. That could be money obstacles. That could be health obstacles. That could be issues with your children. And the last person you would want next to you during these trials and tribulations would be a selfish narcissist who will not sacrifice and give. So every time you sit there and you reminisce about that narcissist, you think about your life, how it could have been worse, okay? If you ended up with that person and, you know, they, they treated you like that. And also if you had kids with them, all right, you're going to be the one responsible for raising those kids because narcissists hate parenting. They hate doing the hard work, all right? So every time you reminisce about that narcissist, do you want that kind of person next to you when you're trying to raise kids or dealing with kids in doctor's offices or dealing with money problems where you know they're not gonna help you in any which way? You want somebody that, that works with you not somebody that's looking to take from you. So you guys, let me cap off about no contact. This is why we do the no contact. You've got to drop them cold, cold, all right? Starve that narcissist. They are nothing. Remember, you've got to, you know, remember who you are, all right? Remember the fact that you're a good person that gave your heart to this person, that tried with this person, and they stepped on you, all right? So now you've got your power. Now you start to see what it is. Now you see that you got played. Now you see that this person isn't worth shit, all right? So you don't want this person in your life, and you will never, ever, ever acknowledge this person. And if they come back, in three days, five months, five years, or 50 years, you will not even acknowledge or say two words to them. And I actually had a narcissist come back after a very long time, and I just blocked him. I just blocked him because I remember the things that he did. And I said, nope, I'm never, ever going to let this back into my life, okay? Nope, I'm done. Nope, I don't care. He, he's still the same person that he was. And this is what you got to remember. A narcissist will always be the same person that they are. And why is that? Because they can't self-reflect and they don't repent. Okay. And it's the same thing with forgiveness. We forgive people that are able to repent for their sins. A narcissist doesn't repent. They're not sorry for hurting you. They're sorry that they didn't manipulate you better. Remember that.
okay? They're sorry that they lost the supply that you were giving them, but they weren't sorry for, for hurting you, all right? Because if they had to do it all over again, they would. And why is that? Because that is their basic character. That is their human pattern of behavior, their personality traits of who they've been molded into, and that is not going to change today, tomorrow, or when they're 90 years old. It's not going to change, okay? So if you want a better life, you want a peaceful life, you don't ever let these kind of people into your life. You distance yourself from demons, all right? And I do call them demons because they don't have the Holy Spirit in them. They don't follow the truth, all right? So, you know, they're about lies, they're about deception, and that is not a person of God, all right? So if you're a person of God, you'd, you wouldn't want somebody like that in your life because they won't add to your life. They will take away your life. They will take away years of your life. They will steal your money. They will steal your children. They will steal people away from you and manipulate people against you. Do you really want that back in your life? No, no, and no, all right? Now you know who the fuck you are. You're moving on. And even if you have those quiet times and everything, you got to talk to yourself and say, I know it's quiet. I know I'm bored. Okay, let me get busy with something. Let me put on music. Let me go to the gym. Let me take a walk. Let me go join a meetup group. But, you know, I'm not going back to somebody that's going to tear me down, all right? So I hope that helps you guys. If it does, Hit the subscribe button and please share the podcast and have a great day. If you guys are having a problem in your dating or relationship or you're dealing with somebody maybe that's narcissistic, you don't know if they're a narcissist or you're just having problems, you're in a toxic relationship and you need some clarity on it. Go to the link in the podcast description for my website where I offer email and phone coaching. If you have a quick question, just a quick question, and you want to get a video sent back to you answering your question, there's also a link there for Visio where I will send you a personalized video answering your question. Hi, you guys, it's Yaz, and I want to tell you about my two books on Amazon. The first book is Regain Your Power. It's all about power and relationship. Who has the power in the relationship? And it goes into all of that, okay? The other book is Signs He's Not Into You, He's Wasting Your Time, okay? Check it out. It gives you a lot of good clues as to whether you're with somebody who's a real one or somebody who's just going to waste your time. You could read them both with Kindle's free trial membership. So check it out. Link is in the podcast description. Hi, you guys. I just want to let you know that The Game Exposed now has their merchandise available. Check out the link in the bio. And you could go check it out. There's cool hoodies, cool sweatpants, cool hats. So go to the bio for the link. And also, don't forget to follow me on Facebook at TheGameExp123 and also on Instagram, TheGameExp123. Okay? And have a great day.